plate to potential. Nugget. Um, self-awareness is made up of two types of self-knowledge. The first is something we named internal self-awareness, which is essentially knowing who we are on the inside. Uh, what do we value? What are we passionate about? What are our aspirations? What are the, the patterns of behavior that we exhibit across situations? But equally important is something called external self-awareness. And in a nutshell, what that means is knowing how other people see us. And what was fascinating, at least to me in our research, was that we found that those two types of self-knowledge, both are required for us to really be self-aware, but they're not related to each other, which I, I was kind of surprised by. I, I always thought, you know, if somebody kind of knows who they are from the inside, of course, they would do the work and find out how they were seen on the outside and vice versa. But we discovered that they are, um, you, you sort of have to think about them as independent skill sets within the self-awareness area. What really caught my attention here was the point Tasha makes about the low correlation between external and internal self-awareness. This in a way is amplified when people are at crossroads in the journey. As it is, meaningful workplace feedback is rare in most organizations. Even if it exists, it's often hard to separate the signal from the noise. This is all the more amplified when you're not sure about what career path to pursue given where you are. You're seeking feedback on the dimension of where to go or to frame it differently, what's a pathway that makes the most sense for me, given my skills, attitudes, passion, and what I care about and what I'm solving for? And on this dimension, I see a lot of people have done some inner work, but they often draw a blank when I ask them about whether they've validated this from the outside. One of my earlier guests was Rupa Kudwa, who's now the India head of Omidya Network, an impact investing firm. She spoke about how she transitioned from being an MD of Crystal to heading Omidya Network in India. There was a friend who gave me some really good advice when I had decided to leave Crystal but had no clue about what. And she said to me, uh, go out and talk to people. And you will be surprised to hear how people perceive you. Uh, you may think you have an idea, but when you go out and start talking to people uh, just to understand what is out there, uh, you will be astonished and then you will have clarity. And I actually did that. Uh, because there was so much time and I was uh, uh, we, we doing the succession and, my, and because it, in Crisil, uh, you know, I was just fortunate to have a set of clients who were all uh, you know, uh, either policy makers or regulators or CEOs of companies, and and I had the platform to interact with them, and everyone knew that I was I was going to leave, and so they all called up and said, "Let's chat, etc." And so I would go and have a cup of tea with, and I did this with about forty five people, I think, and over the over the nine months, and it 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 was just amazing, as my, as my friend had told me the insights that I got, and I think the first clarity. Uh, that I got uh, was on what I did not want to do. And I think that itself became clear to me through these conversations. This, and as people said, why do you do, why don't you do this? Or we think, you know, why don't you join us? And that gave me the clarity on what I did that helped in the elimination process. Uh, in my mind, I don't want to do this. And then after that, I think it became much simpler. I knew there was a small subset of things that I wanted to look at. And that small subset of things was where can I use my skills and capabilities and apply them on a wider platform to achieve, uh, to bring about some kind of change. I didn't know what kind of change it would be, right, uh, in India. So I just knew that part of it. And I came through to that realization through, through these conversations and a process of elimination. And then it was serendipity, Omidya called. You can see Rupa systematically building her external self-awareness as she was transitioning from one context to another. When I work with leaders in transition, I like to talk to the people that know them well and ask them the question, given you know this individual, their strengths, their values, their attitudes, their operating system and their objective function, what's the canvas that they will flourish in? Or is it a portfolio of canvases that they need to be painting on? And that question often opens the door to a very interesting conversation and a new set of possibilities. 
Thank you for listening. For more podcast content, please visit playtopotential.com. The website also has content organized by specific themes in the curated playlist section. And to know more about the leadership and transition advisory work I do, please visit the about section at playtopotential.com.